mirroring that of his team here. The guy who had just one catch on the season through the first two weeks. Four for 89 yards here. Last one, 15 yards. The Winnipeg 47-yard line. Miles has his receivers in motion. Again, play action and decides to take off with it. Spied perfectly that time, though, by Bryant Turner. Comes up with a Ted Laurent feasting gesture. Oh, the quickness of Bryant Turner showed on that play as he tracked down quarterback Stephen Giles as he tried to take off upfield. Not a sack on the play. It was a gain of one, so it'll be second down and nine. A Kuhorn, Shamad Chambers, Canadian wideouts, bottom and top of screen. Penalty flag flies, looks like a late flag, an offside call. Dobson Collins with his first catch. There's a penalty flag. Looks like somebody may have jumped prematurely. It was a Winnipeg Blue Bomber. So a 17-yard pickup for Dobson Collins, celebrating his Offside. 25th birthday yesterday. Winnipeg, number 27. That penalty is declined. First down, Edmonton. That penalty is going to go against the will linebacker, Terrell Parker, who's trying to time up the snap count to hit the blitz here. Got caught leaning into that neutral zone. Just a quick hitter on the crossing route there. Steven Giles to Dobson Collins. Collins again getting an opportunity to play here tonight with the injury to Darius Bowman. Giles again. Chambers again. And Shamad Chambers with a penalty flag in the backfield. This one could be negated. Holding call, it looks like, against the Eskimos. It will be a holding call. 22 yard pickup. And that one's erased. Holding. Edmonton, number 63. 10-yard penalty, remains first down. Well, Shemai Chambers came up smiling as he realized that this one was going to be negated. He's working against one of the best in the business in Javon Johnson. Juggling it initially, but stayed with the football. He's the young kid, 23 years old. It's the veteran and the most outstanding defensive player in the CFL last year. First and 20. Giles again keeps it. And will throw it. Again, it's Collins. Close to the first down marker. You can see Paul Hapolis going out, wondering if maybe Stephen Giles had crossed the line of scrimmage. There was no flag on the play. Well, remember earlier we showed you defensive end, Alex Hall getting caught, losing contain because he was biting on that run fake, crashing down to the inside. He goes hard inside after the running back, Hugh Charles. That opens up a whole lot of ground for Stephen Giles to run. Plenty of time to make that play. Again, the Eskimos using that play action a bit because they've established run and moving the pocket. And back to the run. Another opportunity to move the sticks. Very close to another first down. Again, what a difference less than a week makes for the Edmonton Eskimos. And could anything more go wrong? Last week in Regina, just one point score. Their defense played very well, but offensively, they weren't even on the same field as the Saskatchewan defense, and they lost to Darius Bowman. You come into this week, you think the struggles just might continue, and it goes to show you how unpredictable this game is, particularly in the early season. Yeah, we're in an era right now in the Canadian Football League where I, I don't really believe we've seen this kind of parity for quite some time where anything can happen on any given game day. So third and inches, Kerry Joseph. Comes in for the third down play. Blue Bomber team that has been shut out so far. As incomprehensible as that one point Edmonton put on the board last week. Equally the same for the Bombers. 
That big goose egg. To Bertrand, it goes forward. And this might not be a first down. They're going to have to measure this. Bertrand looked like he might have been stopped here. And indeed, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers with their biggest play. Turnover on downs by the Edmonton Eskimos. And one thing has gone right for the Blue Bombers. A stop of Stadium. Expected a close one between two low-scoring teams coming into this game. We did not expect this. 35-0 Eskimos. Laudy Norzon on first down, right side. Joe Burnett in on the tackle. There's a penalty flag back near the 38-yard line. Blue Bombers catch a break as we went to break on the third down stop on the gamble by the Eskimos. Trying to propel some momentum off of this. Trying to get something going. Major foul, face mask, Edmonton. 15 yards from the end of the play, automatic first down. So at the end of the play, face mask call. 15 yards, tacked on. And another break here for the Blue Bombers. Watch for TJ Hill, number 12 of the Eskimos. Excuse me, called on 22, Joe Burnett. Keto Pobla, taking the supplemental draft last year by the Blue Bombers. Montreal born. Nine yard pickup. Bombers need to go no huddle here. Time is their enemy. Seven and a half to go, third quarter. And there's Dorzon. Up near the midfield stripe. Scoots by the Eskimos. Ten yard gain. Moves the sticks again. Nice cut there by Blaudy Dorzog. The Bombers going into trademark of Gary Croton's offense. Liking to go no huddle for extended periods. Play fast. One of the themes in the CFL this year. There's a rush again. Break. Down he goes. And there is Donnie O, the former bomber. Came to the Eskimos in the offseason. Don Aramision, Winnipeg born. You don't think that one feels good. A loss of seven. Donnie Aramision lined up at his defensive tackle spot. He's working against his old teammate Steve Morley and just a club move to the inside. Get some by, keep the offensive lineman hands down and off of him. Eskimos keep that sack tally going. Now four in the game. Ramasyan. Brink hangs in. Threw it off of Rory Colhurt. Blue Bombers move the sticks a couple times, but that's it. The drive stalls, and again, Mike Renault will have to come out. Well, now Alex Brick was in the process of getting buried by Marcus Howard as he threw that football. This becomes a challenge when you get behind by a lot in a football game and virtually every down is an obvious throwing down. You got to try and be a little bit unpredictable or else the defense pins their ears back and they're going to the same spot every time. no has been busy. Eskimos D pitching a shutout. Renan on the one hop. Steps out of bounds, penalty flying there. We'll come back to Commonwealth Stadium tonight. Wendy's Friday Night Football. This is a bigger Eskimo fan than he is. His dad, Tom, who is watching. Absolutely. Well, the Edmonton Eskimos changed this game early on. Fumble return for a touchdown by former Blue Bomber Clint Kent. And they, they've just been taking it to Winnipeg all night. Defensively, in particular, knocked Buck Pierce out of the game. The offense has clicked into a gear, <laughs> into a gear because they had no gear last week. And for the most part, has looked pretty good here. Hugh Charles has looked good too. Takes a hard hit from Pierre Luc Labbe. And consider that the Edmonton Eskimos are without one of their main targets. Remember last week on this play. Uh, Darius Bowman injured. 
getting it up the tackle on this Craig Butler interception late in the ball game against the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Damage to his medial collateral ligament. You see that left knee get rolled up on at the end of the play. A much bigger loss than the game itself. See a thousand yard receiver leave, particularly when your offense is struggling at the time. Giles, sideline, Chambers. Oh, he caught it. No, they're saying an incomplete pass. Look for a moment that Shamad Chambers had made the catch. And he said, throw the flag, coach, throw the flag. And they might just do that if they get a look at this replay. And indeed, it looked like Chambers made the grab. Working on Javon Johnson again. That fade route. And where Shamad Chambers got in trouble in that one was just with the bobble. And they have thrown a, cha thrown a challenge flag and a Darius Bowman also chirping in on it. Well, I think Shamad Chambers would get the catch here if he catches this one cleanly, but he appeared to bobble it and it got down into his body and legs as he hit the ground. By that point, he's sitting on the sidelines. And out of bounds. Well, the kid has made an impressive debut the last couple of weeks. Yeah, I mean, whether this is ruled a catch or not, Shamad Chambers has earned himself more playing time based on what he's done so far tonight. Well, th this yeah, one. Well, and that, <laughs> at that angle, you don't do anything. I never, I never yeah, disagree yeah, with you. On the field this one, I, I don't pass. know. We will review the play. Jake Ireland, it's over to you, man. CFL control. Look at this. Here it is in his thigh, off his calf. And he, yeah, he clearly keeps the ball up off the ground. This is going to be our best look at it is from this angle. So initially it's going to be bobbled. It gets down into his legs, never touches the ground. Okay, you got to yeah. decide, though, when does he get control of this football? And has his shoulder hit the sidelines when he has control? Very quick timing. He's still in, but doesn't have control. There's control. And I think Shamad Chambers might just have himself a catch. Circus grab by Shamad Chambers. And again, sixth overall pick by the Eskimos. There was talk at on draft day that he could go as high as possibly even number one. That's how well he was thought of after Ecamp. He has raised eyebrows, went down south, and tried out in the NFL and made his way back to Edmonton. Well, he could be a godsend to the Eskimos, particularly with Adarius Bowman out and the fact that He's got the good birth certificate going in terms of ratio here. Yeah, for sure. Great size, tremendous speed. Still raw, but getting an opportunity to play, and that's important because all he needs is experience. Very likable young man. First touchdown tonight. In his second game in the CFL, and likely the first of many to come. You saw him a lot at E-Camp. You've only seen him, but obviously a small sample of work. Does he remind you of anybody? Uh, you know, I, I wouldn't compare him to anybody in particular. I mean, what I would describe Shema Chambers as is a prototypical receiver in that you want a guy who's big, you want a guy who has speed. I mean, he's what you're seeing is a rookie Canadian receiver right now who's playing the boundary wide receiver spot which is a position where usually you're trying to put a guy where you're going to try and create matchups After and get some one-on-ones. On -one. We have a completed pass wow. at the 48-yard line. <laughs> It'll be Edmonton, first down. Well, Shamad Chambers, you got your first CFL touchdown, and you just made your first highlight of the night. That was a spectacular grab. And Darius... Well, he's, he's working on his officiating now that he's got some time off. Oh, he knew it all along. Had faith in his guy. We're seeing a pretty good battle. As I said, Shamad Chambers is working against the league's most outstanding defensive player out there. And he's doing okay. Circus catch, 33 yards. Keeps the drive alive here. And Charles again. Up Main Street, Johnny Sears there again, 
You know, we haven't really had a chance to talk about it too much, but the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have also had to do a lot of shuffling, and you wonder this week, particularly with their changes, how difficult it is. So used to having a guy like Alex Suber in there and Brandon Stewart. Those two all-stars that you replace. Yeah, in a, a passing league as this is, that's two very good pass defenders to have out of your lineup. Play clock counts down. Giles, quick drop. Let's it go. Picked off. Javon Johnson wins this battle. This time, Javon Johnson cuts back to the 40. And he's down, and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers have another turnover. They need it desperately. I'll give you some words of advice. If you want to keep your job, stay away from two. That's the reason why I was defensive player of the year. Okay. Oh, Javon Johnson. The message has been sent. Yes, defensive player of the year in 2011 with eight interceptions. He's got his first of 2012. Giving the Winnipeg Blue Bombers a much needed spark. And speaking of spark, you remember last year when Johnny Sears was kicked out of a game and fined for a late hit on Stephen Giles? Because the Edmonton Eskimo quarterback sure remembers it. Yeah, you chirped him at the end of that play. They got into it now, Alex Brent. That's not going to do it. It's a tight coverage again. TJ Hill has been a ball hawk tonight. Jamon Johnson. Here's what the numbers were last year. That's why he was the MODP, most outstanding defensive player. First defensive back ever to win that award. New bars have to get out of this two and out row in a hurry. Brink. Oh, Keto Pobla tried to join the circus too. Complete pass. So third down, and we've got a scrap going. This is full on. This is full on. Glenn January's into it. Look it out now. All the big boys are in the middle of that. Oh, and look, a whole lot of punches Marcus have been Howard thrown. and Glenn January going at it here. There's going to be a bunch of ejections yes. from this one. Well, a frustrated Winnipeg football club, obviously. And now, Kim Murphy and his crew will sort this out. You throw a punch, you throw one punch, you're out of the game. There were a number of punches thrown there. Well, there sure were. Most of them being exchanged between the Eskimo D-line and the Winnipeg O-line. Orange nylon all over the field. I'm sure Kavis Reed is emphasizing to his team. You can see from Kavis' reaction, he did not want his players to get into this because even with the lead like this, you never know. Kavis right into uh, In Marcus the game of Howard. football, there's nothing to be gained from that. He preaches discipline, passion, but discipline. In January, he was throwing him too. Well, we've already seen an ejection for this this season. Week one, Chris Patrick of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Well, that's the first pushback the Blue Bombers have shown all night. But not the right kind of pushback. This could take a while. May have begun the... Two plays previous on that interception return when Stephen Giles got into it with Sears. Emperor's obviously.